Welcome to the Board of Education's board meeting. May I have a motion to go into closed session? Pursuant to gen general provision article 3-305B and 3-104, I move we go into closed session to consider matters that relate to negotiations, to discuss matters that affect one or more individual, and to consult with counsel. May I have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. Thank you, we will return at 12.40 p.m. Welcome back. Mrs. Harlow, would you like to discuss the details for the Citizens Advisory Committee and then announce our future meetings? Sure, um, I've done a lot of research and there's um, pretty much two guidelines that are out there with our sister counties. Some of them have a real distinct list of people in the community that they include, such as two business people, two civic leaders, um, various school board um, employees. Other counties strictly keep it to citizens only, which wouldn't ex exclude your civic organizations or your business community, but it would, it would exclude, and they're very distinctive in their language, education, Board of Education employees. And so I kind of wanted to lay it out to you guys which way you thought would be better for our county. We are fortunate that Dr. Kane has built some committees already. Um, like the one county says, two principals, two teacher representatives from every school appointed by the principal. I'm a little concerned since we have those committees in place, is that going to alter our community involvement, our citizens maybe not feeling as comfortable as they could in just a a group of their peers. So I would suggest we follow the county that opens it up to the community but excludes employees. I would ask Darren if that's appropriate, but there are the two groups very clearly defined within their handbooks. And it depends on which county you look at as to which way they go. I, I, think, I think it's your discretion. I think you're, you're open to do it as you see fit. When in doubt, the only thing I would suggest on any of these things is when in doubt, the more you include the public, the more public notice you provide, right. the better. Right. And I wouldn't feel as comfortable excluding employees if Dr. Kane had not covered that well with her groups. I know she has her principal groups and she has several school-based employee groups. Um, I'm wondering if it would alter our community volunteerism. And I am already getting people emailing me saying, hey, when is that press release going to go out? How do we sign up? Um, I'm just gathering all the information for whoever does write the press release so that we've made a concerted effort together to make the decision on how we want to build our structure. Mm -hmm. I'm interested. What are the, can you just name the committees? Dr. King, that you, oh, you, my that, committees? That you just I have a parent advisory committee, I have a student advisory committee, and I have a staff advisory committee. And I'm just going to say that the one or two counties that are real distinctive in their guidelines say two members from the parent advisory committee, two members from the special education advisory committee, two members from um, PTSA. So PTSA would certainly be inclusive in excluding employees, but your principals and teachers, I mean, would not be excluded, excuse me, they'd be included. Your principals and teachers would be excluded in that verbiage that no Board of Education employees or staff are available for volunteerism in this group. That's how they wrote their guidelines when they only had no staff. I like the PTA members yes, having yes. to say, and the reason for that is because Queen Anne's County does not have a, um, a PTA cancel anymore, right, right. and haven't has not for years. And, and I'm a little apprehensive of saying just two. Like if two business exactly. people show up, I don't want eight others to be turned down. So right. that's why I like that guideline of open to all I, community I'm members. It, we might have an onslaught of parents. We might have an onslaught of business members. Right. What generally happens with a committee like this is you might get 100 applicants. Take them all. Right. They're going to filter away. They're going to fall off. Right. They lose interest. They can't all come at the same time. Mm -hmm. So I say you put it out there. You accept as you, hopefully all of them. Right. And then it develops on its own. We don't sit on that board with them. Right. We don't sit in their meetings. That would be an Open Meeting Act violation. They're a standalone board, and they're basically, my understanding from the way the descriptions are written, 
an advisory committee of concerns of the community that sometimes the board doesn't know about or gets a diluted vision of. So they would report directly to us. They would have a meeting time, the same time every month. Sure, you're going to attend some meetings, not all. By having a wide range and not saying just two business people, we've got a lot of business people that are very interested in what we do and supporting us. I don't think we want to narrow our guidelines well, yeah, on the, on the that are, community. That are, have a children in our school sure, system. Sure, sure. You know. So I would love to say PTSA, but I right. would just say anyone involved in PTSA, exactly. don't, don't think exactly. that you're excluded. Just a good representation yes. of your everyday citizen. Taxpayer, not a student in the system. Parent, yes or no, a student right. in the system. Not really exclude anybody anyone. in that community arena. No, another, I, another model you can look at for what it's worth and mm -hmm. look at the statutes. You know how it's about to end, but there used to be this, the school board nominating commissions uh -huh. that were that classic, bring someone in from every right, sector right, in order to have a right. good commission. There's still one on the books for Anne Arundel's, which will soon be gone, which which has like six different sources where people are coming from That's in order to make I, it. Those guidelines. Yeah, and then, and, then, and then, you know, these advisory committees, they're all a little bit different. The one thing I did notice that I think is important is you have two high schools, but some have mm -hmm. 10, 12, mm -hmm. 8, whatever. Mm -hmm. They make it a, a purpose to to have somebody from both schools or both mm -hmm. communities or, or all 10 areas, again, to make it look like it's, it's inclusive. Well, and Anne Arundel did that, including principals and staff members, but I'm a little concerned that we might have people who say, I'd rather it just be community. You know, we... We really are pretty open and available, I think, to our staff, um, especially through Dr. Kane. It is a citizens' advisory committee, so yeah. Calvert County. I really like the way they wrote theirs, and that's the guideline that specifically excludes employees. Um, I recommend that route myself. Now it's up to the board every year to determine, or every new board to determine if that's the way they want to keep that position structured, you know, I think that would be something that over the course of time it gets revisited and it gets worked and if we have problems with the way it works, that particular board works on it. I personally think it sounds good, Sharon. So I don't know if we have Do to have vote on that well. structure and then I'll get all that information gathered for somebody to do write an actual to press release. Darren? Well, you, I would just simply handle it like you would do any other committee you, you appoint. I, mean, I don't know how many committees you got appointed in the past. Um, but it, it generally it's a, your appointment. And so if you vote on it as a group to appoint one, and then you have the rules on how you appoint, you go from there. Okay. And I can follow up with the written rules um, okay. of the guidelines that exclude right. employees. Right. I can. I had it. I just didn't know we were going to do this today. I know I had asked, so I right. appreciate it. Right. And that being said, then we could get it out to the community, and it'll be handled with someone taking the calls or taking an application or whatever. Right. I, I don't think we need an application process or anything like right. that. We just have them just call have and a, say, a meeting we and want see to who shows volunteer up. and set a meeting. You may time. also want to, and then Dr. King may feel different about this, but I think you may want to include the fact you're doing this as an item on your one of your upcoming public uh, agendas. Just an announcement of public, hey, yes. we're going okay. in this direction. Yes. Oh, and we've I think, done that. We've good. Done that I wasn't meetings. sure. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. 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 That's how come I'm getting the feedback from the community. Hey, okay. when are we going to start? And I feel, I'm sorry, I should have done this last month. But yeah, yeah that's fine. Trying okay. to get through it. All right, so then we need a motion. For his okay. My question is just, you know, most of my, many of my interactions are just parents due to just the nature of my life here in Queen Anne's County and my, my children in the school system. And so I'm often approached with concerns from parents. And so I loved this idea. Um, I, I really think it's a good idea. But I also want to better understand when I'm interacting with these parents. And I perhaps suggest what you mentioned, the parent advisory committee. I don't quite understand this. Can you better explain to me what I can then tell parents who are interested in that as an option? Is that a committee that people can call you and join? And how, what are your meetings set up? And how do they, can you just do a cliff note version? Sure, so what I do is I put out a um, announcement that that's what I'm, I'm looking for members who, or families who want to be a part of whichever, you know, or people who want to be a part of whichever advisory. 
I sent out to um, principals so that they can talk among the staff and select students. But I'm not talking about students who serve on student government necessarily. I'm talking about students who would participate in a group having face to face with me. And that's what it really is for all three of the groups. It's an opportunity for staff, for students, for um, parents to have some face-to-face -face time with me. Last year, we didn't start at the beginning of the year. We started sort of midway through, or probably around maybe October, November, actually. And so um, a lot of the conversation initially was around the budget. But we set the agenda at the end of each meeting, so it is based on what the members want to talk about, whether it's the students, the parents, or you know the staff. And we have conversations about those issues if there is homework for me or I need to contact somebody else in the school district, then I get that information, bring it back to the group. Sometimes the students go and poll their peers and have conversations with their peers and they bring back information. Sometimes they do presentations. But we talk about what each group wants to talk about. It's an opportunity for me to have some face-to-face -face contact with our stakeholders. Right. Now, when, when you meet with them, are you meeting with all those groups at the same time? Or are you meeting with no. them separately? It, generally, it's on the same day, but it's separately. So, so I have my conversation to feel safe that it's absolutely enclosed within that context. We establish our meeting norms mm -hmm. at the beginning um, of before we meet, mm -hmm. and we decide how we are going to interact and and what we're going to how we're going to you know deal with issues at the outset. So everybody knows, and we reference those norms each time we meet, and and it works well. Okay. And we, and have you had sorry. good um, involvement with the parent advisory? I have. Okay. I have. Now, when I'm speaking with a parent and they're interested in something like this, would I um, suggest that they speak with the principal of where their student is is um, going to school, or should they contact your office directly? So in September, they will see it'll be on the website, our mm -hmm. Queen Anne's County Public website, and then it'll also be from in schools. So parents will see that they can. Um, contact there will be an email for them to contact and it'll likely be our new communication specialist because that's the person who organizes those meetings for me and so they can either go through the principal or go directly to the email contact that i i publish this is wonderful because i do believe you know we have to have people help us toe the line and so it's really wonderful when there's opportunities that are offered to the community to then put their energy into a productive way such as these types of committees and, and what sharon's proposing and ours would be a little different in the sense that we would not be sitting in we would right. not be there would be a chairperson and a vice chairperson of this elected by the group that volunteers mm -hmm. and then they would individually meet with the board within the oma guidelines as a reporting agents uh, duties back to us if there's a big concern floating around that we may not know about that could blindside us or a bad rumor that's just gotten out of control that we can address and publicly clearly with Darren and you or you even making the announcement clarifying what what the situation is or isn't I think that's what the goal is here they would also bring to us things that they would like to see in the future that we can do better <coughs> you know it's just gonna be what they do and what they create almost I kind of feel that we're sort of hands off in dictating that to them mm -hmm. we don't want to be the balancer there or the uh, the outweigher we want to be the balancer you know we want it to be a productive committee that they feel that they're really connected to our service to mm -hmm. Sharon I have an idea mm -hmm. um, instead of air um, student liaisons from each school just showing up at meetings why don't we ask them to be that's a thought the voice so that they could come back and report on those meetings. That's a thought. Um, we yes, can make yeah. sure that, yeah, you know, the, the norm, the norm can you do is, that? The norm is, and it really is a win-win, is because it's, it, it works procedurally for the CAC, but it also works to the betterment of the school system. Is As part of your initial section of your board meetings where you have yeah, the reports of your activities, the superintendent's report, the student members, and, and all that, and like the awards, you include as some do, for instance, a PTA report, yeah. a CAC report. Yeah. And you have that regular place at the beginning of the meeting where they get to come and tell you, hey, we got together, we met, we talked about these issues, one of the things we would like the board to consider. And what's great about it is they're always, it's just a positive part of the meeting where these citizens are sharing with you what they've been up sure. to. And sure. it just, to me, that's the model that's the best. Yeah. And, I, and I've seen yeah. that many meetings tenor is, 
adjusted and softened and better because the CAC right. and PTA reports are so solid. Right. Yeah. So right. I would I would make it I would take advantage of that. As part of their duties. As, as part of what they do. Not necessarily the student's to, duty, but the chairperson of the they committee. Would come to your, they would come to your meetings oh, okay. and have a whatever 2.05 or wherever it right. is right. to do a five minute presentation right. on yeah. what the CAC's been up to, what's on the agenda this year. Sure. Whatever, and it, it's, it involves that. That's another person or five that get to come to your board meetings right. that are there feeling yeah. they have a stake. Mm -hmm. And I think that model, I, I think just quickly real. looked at Calvert and Anna Roth. They all, they mm -hmm. also all have a policy setting this up. I don't right. think you have a right. policy right now. Right. I would recommend a policy that can be very ba basic, as in we would like it to be the policy of the school system to appoint such a committee. The superintendent can develop a reg that talks about how you get there. Yes. Yes. Again, you're not going to do all this in one minute. Right. You could get this rolling and still invite them to come make a report without there being a policy. But I recommend a right. policy in I agree. on I CSA. Agree. That was the last point I needed to make. Because actually, I had their letters, how they invited their community members, and that's where kind of the guidelines are set in print. I knew I should look for a policy, too, and just didn't get around to it. So thank you for that. Are our right. student Great. board members on the Student Advisory Committee? Uh, no. <laughs> they were not last year. They were not. But you know, but you know what? Um, one of our student board members uh, was on, that will be for this year, was on my advisory last year. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Ms. Teddy. Cool. That's it. So, I guess we um, need to take a vote to, to create it, I guess. Create okay. it and mm -hmm. set something out to the public. Based okay. On the guidelines we All right. Discussed. So let's see. I need a motion to uh, for Mrs. Harlow to set up the information for the Citizens Advisory Committee. Um, to go to the community. Go to the, yeah, to go out into the community. Mrs. Harlow will set that all up. Um, so I need a second. Second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed, say no. Okay, the eyes have it. It's all yours. Thank you. <coughs> and Ms. Harlow, if you would like to, uh, if you give me whatever it is that you want, we'll make sure it gets put on the website. Great, 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 great. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I just, That's it great. came to me that we were one of the few that don't have this. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I just discovered it in our handbook work. When Jackie printed everybody's handbook for us, um, some of these are distinctly mentioned in the handbook. And I was like, you know, we don't even have that. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing a need for it. And the, these avenues where we empower our stakeholders mm -hmm. is beneficial for just our mm -hmm. overall county relationship and well-being. Absolutely. And in the end, ultimately, I do believe the students benefit. So these are yeah. wonderful things. And thank you for your hard work. And it's another uh, venue to uh, to help us with the budget. You know, yeah, not to right. go into the uh, meetings. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, that gets them gets them involved that they haven't been in the past. Mm -hmm. And her feeling, I think, now that they didn't know. Well, I don't know. I can't make a judgment why they didn't know, but yeah. they are very vocal now that they'll be there next time. Yes. yes. So it's good. Great. We'll see. Okay. Great. All right, so at this time, we'll move on to the future meetings and events. Uh, September 5th is our school board meeting that begins um, at 4.30, goes into closed session and opens back up at 6. September 11th is the BTE master plan to count county commissioners. September 19th is a school board work session. October 3rd is the school board meeting that's canceled. Was it canceled? Because that was the main conference. Oh, it's okay, so it's rescheduled. Okay, if I kept on looking, I would have saw that. Um, the, May, the annual MAPE conference in Ocean City is October 3rd through the 5th. October 10th will be our school board meeting. October 17th, school there will be a school board work session. May I have a motion to go into close our, no, motion to close, to close the meeting. I move we close the meeting, we adjourn. Second. A second. All in favor say aye. All opposed say no. The ayes have it, thank you, and we'll see you on September 5th.